Hello and welcome to the next instalment in this video tutorial series. In this instalment we're going to be actually making the carbon fibre bonnet itself and we're going to be showing you the latest techniques for making a, a medium sized carbon fibre panel like this and obviously we're using the mould that we made earlier in the series. The first thing that we've done is prepare the surface of this mould using several applications of Easy Lease Chemical Release Agent, which we've done as per the instructions for that product. And now the next thing that we're going to do is optional step, but we're actually going to spray the surface of this mould using a very special epoxy compatible polyester gel coat. Now it's very important at this point that we make it very clear that the GC50 epoxy compatible polyester gel that we're spraying here is not the same as a normal polyester gel coat. Please don't try and use a normal polyester gel with epoxy because it just simply will not bond and will immediately delaminate. However, one thing it does have in common with a normal polyester gel is the fact that we catalyze it using a regular MEKP catalyst. We've mixed the gel up in one of the paper cups that's designed for the cup gun. So it's a case of just putting that cup into the holder and then pressing the lid firmly on and then we load this into the gun by pulling the spring to hold the cup in place. Our gel coat spraying cup gun is equipped with a 6mm nozzle, which when you're spraying a material as viscous as a gel coat is the ideal choice. And we're just going to try and get a smooth, even coat over the surface, starting and finishing off the edge of the part to avoid getting any drips on the mould. We've now allowed this gel coat to cure fully overnight. Now unlike a conventional polyester gel coat, when this cures, it cures with a hard finish and no tack at all, and that leaves the perfect bonding finish for the epoxy resin. So the first thing that we're going to do is just wipe around the perimeter of the mold, clearing any overspray off this flange, and that's so that we've got a nice clean surface to stick the bagging tape onto. We're going to apply the, the bagging tape all the way around the perimeter of the mold at this point for convenience really before we put down the bagging consumables and the reinforcement itself. The only other thing that we're going to do before we start is we're just going to look for any high spots like this on the mold surface which have been caused by a drip off the gel coat gun and we're just going to flat those off and that will stop any of these from printing through onto the surface of the reinforcement. We're going for a laminate of 200 gram carbon, 2 mil lantorsoric, and then 200 gram carbon. Visually, of course, the first layer is the most important. So we're just being careful to gently drape this 2-2 twill into the mold. Often what you want to do is get the carbon to just stick slightly in position. And so what we do is just spritz a very small amount of acetone onto the carbon. And what that does, it just slightly activates the gel coat surface and means that you can, you can stick the carbon down onto it. And once we've done that, we just use a pair of shears to cut off the excess material. We've only got to be just inside of the tape line. And now this is the Lantor Soric, which is an infusion core material. And, uh, and we've cut this just with a pair of scissors about 25 mil short of the edge of the bonnet all the way around. And that's just because we don't want the core material exposed at the edge of the panel. In this close-up you can really see and get a good idea of how the Soric core material feels and behaves. It's very easy to cut and lay into the mould and then we've got this fine honeycomb structure around which the resin can flow as an internal core media. Next we're using some special infusion grade spray tack and just spraying that lightly over the surface of the reinforcement and then using that to help us position the Soric squarely and evenly in the middle of the mould, which is quite important for us because we want to maintain an even gap all the way around the edge where the core material ends, because into that we're going to be layering some 200 gram carbon tape. We're using a 50 mil tape here. Again, the infusion spray tack is particularly helpful to allow us to 
fix that in place and position it very accurately up against the edge of the sorit. We certainly don't want a gap at this point. We're going to build up six layers of the carbon tape so that we've got a match for the thickness of the sorit. So you can see we've got this tape nice and neatly butted up against the sorit. So we're just going to add our next layer, final layer of 200 gram carbon cloth all the way over the surface. And then we're just going to trim this just like we did before. So over the top of this second layer of reinforcement, we're just positioning a layer of peel ply. I'm just going to hold this in place with a few pieces of the release breaker tape. The next thing that we want to be thinking about is the infusion mesh and the spiral. So we're going to position infusion mesh along the front here because we're going to be running the resin the shortest distance, which is from the back of the bonnet to the front of the bonnet. And then we'll also be positioning another strip of the infusion mesh just at this front edge, and that's going to help to spread the vacuum. We're positioning this infusion spiral all the way around this back edge and just holding it in place with some of the release breaker. So the final thing to do before we bag this up is to position the resin infusion silicon connectors. We've got one here at the back of the bonnet, which is the resin feed line. So that sits on top of the spiral. And then we've got one opposite on the front end of the bonnet, which sits on this mesh, and this is the vacuum line. So we're just going to tape that in place, stop it moving down, and just pierce through. We've added some gum tape pleats around the outside of the, of the mold, and so we're just sealing this bag down to the tape. Now we've got an alternative video dedicated to the vacuum bagging process, so we're not going to cover it in much detail here. But if I just go over what we've got, we've got the vacuum bag completely sealed to the tool all the way around. We've got our pleats in place, ensuring that we've got plenty of bag, plenty of slack on the bag. At the top of the bonnet here, we've got the vacuum line connected to the catch pot and the catch pot connected to the composites vacuum pump. And then where we've got the resin feed line at the back of the bonnet, this is just clamped off. So what we're going to do is switch the vacuum pump on and pull a vacuum on this. Finally, before we can infuse, we're just going to clamp off this bag and do a vacuum drop test, which is absolutely essential before we can do the infusion. We've come back to this part now a couple of hours later and we've performed a vacuum drop test and that's shown us that there's been absolutely no pressure drop in this bag whatsoever and so that's the point where we can continue. When you're calculating the amount of resin that an infusion project is going to use, of course you do need to make sure that you allow for the, the SORIC and also the vacuum bagging consumables. We've actually got a handy calculator on the Easy Composites website that will help you to do this. Now you'll see us do this again later. What we're doing here is just mixing a 50-50 blend of the fast and the slow hardener which are available for the IN2 infusion resin. And the reason we do that is this gives us a, a medium speed hardener which is perfect for an infusion of this size. It's very important to thoroughly mix the resin with its hardener trying to do so without aerating the resin while we do it, but any unmixed resin will fail to cure in the part. So we've allowed the resin just to degas for a few minutes just to get any large air bubbles out. So what we're going to do is release the clamp from the vacuum line from when we did the drop test. We're going to turn on the vacuum pump, open the vacuum pump supply, and then we're just going to draw the first amount of resin up to this clamp just to remove any air that's in at this point. We're just using one of the spare clamps to hold the line on the side of the resin container and then we just gently 
unclamp the resin line into the part. You can see how quickly the resin follows the line of the feed spiral, giving it a very even advance across the part. So you can see how effective the SORIC is as, a, as an internal flow media, because this line here, where the, of the resin advancing through the part, is not being hindered by the fact that the infusion mesh has actually stopped at this point and this is still progressing through the laminate nicely. As you can see the resin has now reached the silicon connector on the other side of the part and the resin is actually starting to be drawn down the vacuum line. So what we're going to do is just let this carry on being drawn just for a couple of minutes and that's actually extracting some of this aerated resin and then we're going to clamp off the resin line. With both of these lines clamped off now, we're okay to turn off the vacuum pump and we're going to leave this part to fully cure. Now with the hardness speed that we've chosen and the ambient temperature, that's going to take about 24 hours. With this part now completely cured off, you can hear the resin is, is absolutely solid. It's now time to remove all of the bagging consumables from the mold. So we're going to start with the, uh, the bag itself. Just removing the peel ply from the back of this laminate has actually started to pre-release it from the mold already. So we know we're not going to have any trouble and that really is the sign of a good chemical release agent. So we're just going to get in and, and tease it up and it's, it's out of the mold already. With this part out of the mold, you can really see all of this hard work's paid off. We've got a fantastic mirror gloss over the surface of the bonnet uh, from that uh, clear gel coat that we've used. There's no pinholes whatsoever, there's no bubbles, there's no air inclusions, and uh, so you've got to be pretty pleased with that at this stage. Moving on now to the inner skin molding, we're actually going to be using uh, just two layers of reinforcement on this, which is going to be a 200 gram and a 600 gram, because we want this to be as light as possible. Although we're going to have additional reinforcement in the critical areas, which is where the hinges are, and also where the catch mechanism is at the top. This mold has been prepared with several applications of Easy Lease Chemical Release Agent, just like we've done in previous sections. And so we'll just be laying on the reinforcement directly onto that. So the 200 gram cloth is the first one down onto the mold because obviously this has the, the flatter finish. We're going to use some spray tack just on the surface of the, of the mold and this will help us to position the, uh, the carbon. Now it will leave slight imperfections on the surface of the part but that doesn't matter for the underside molding that we're working on here. The next step is to put our second layer of reinforcement down. So in this case we're using the 660 gram cloth. Now the reason for doing that is that this will actually give us about 0.6, nearly 0.7 mil thickness of reinforcement, uh, but we can do it in a single layer which is not only quicker to put down, but it's also considerably cheaper than three or more layers of a 200 gram cloth. Another light application of the spray tack will just help us to position this heavier 660 gram cloth. With both layers of reinforcement down now, we're just going to trim away the excess reinforcement. With all of our reinforcement in place, we'll just now go on with a standard infusion 
vacuum bagging stack, which will be peel ply, then the mesh, and then the bag itself. We're just going to cut the mesh approximately to the right size, and then we're just going to hold it loosely in place. We're going to take some of the vacuum bagging tape and just tape up all the way around the edge of the flange. As before, we're just going to add a few pleats made out of the bagging tape and position these around the edges. The next thing we've done is position the infusion spiral around this, uh, this edge and we've also gone down the sides as well in exactly the same pattern that we did for the top skin. So we're just going to position the infusion silicon connector on top of the spiral here and then we've got the other infusion connector ready to go at the front. And so on now with the bagging film itself, which we're going to tape down onto these pleats. So we're going to switch on the vacuum pump, start to pull the bag down and position the bag as it goes down. Now clearly we've sped up time quite a bit in this shot, but this really is a very important part of the uh, resin infusion process. And for that reason, if you want to learn more about how to get the bag down properly, then please check out our resin infusion video and our video dedicated to vacuum bagging. We've completed the drop test now on this bag, so we're 100% confident that there is no leak whatsoever. So it's now time to do the infusion itself. So as before, we're going to be using an epoxy infusion resin. And for this infusion, because it's going to take place relatively quickly, we're actually going to be using a combination of the fast and the slow hardener together. With the resin thoroughly mixed now and settled, it's time to start the infusion. Start the vacuum. As you can see, the resin has now reached the other side of the infusion project, so it's time to clamp off the feed line. And we can now clamp off the resin line. So we can now turn off the vacuum pump and leave this to cure overnight or as long as it takes, depending on the hardness speed that we've used. We've now left this part to fully cure, and so it's time to strip off all of the vacuum bagging consumables just like normal. With everything stripped off now, we'll just remove the, uh, the part from the mold. And that is our inner molding. Now that we've got the uh, mold out of the way, we can have a nice look at this part itself. It really is incredibly strong and light and uh, all of the detail that we've got on the on the underside molding of course has been faithfully reproduced in this uh, in this inner skin so this is going to make a fantastic inside for our bonnet we've now made both the outside skin and the inside skin for our carbon fiber bonnet and so that concludes this part of the video tutorial in the final part we'll be looking at trimming both of these components fixing the, uh, the fittings inside and then bonding them together and finishing it to complete the part.